From owning Lance's Dragonites to flying Pikachu, these are 27 rare Pokemon you will never own. Now I'm guessing all of you have caught a Magikarp before, but I bet it wasn't one that knew the move Dragon Rage. Well, that's because there are only 20 of these special Dragon Rage University Magikarp in the entire world. These were distributed through the Tamamushi University Hypertest campaign in magazines published by Shogakukan for Red and Blue. And while extremely rare, they even made an appearance in an anime episode to coincide with the event. Now, Pikachu, being the mascot of Pokemon, has unsurprisingly had tons of rare events throughout the years. This ranges from the Flying Pikachu, which you'll actually be able to get again in Scarlet and Violet, to a Surfing Pikachu that was eventually made available in Sun and Moon. Gen 4 brought us the Sleepy Pikachu that knows Rest, Sleep Talk, Yawn and Snore, Gen 5 saw an Extreme Speed, Grass Knot, and Singing Pikachu, and Gen 6 brought an interesting Tohoka Pikachu knowing Bestow and Hold Hands. This was actually given to players that made a donation to the Pokemon With You campaign, which was a charity to help people affected by the Great East Japan earthquake. And finally, Gen 8 gave out all eight variants of Ash's Pikachu, complete with each regional cap that Ash has worn throughout his journey. And on the subject of Pikachu, we actually got two variants of its baby evolution during Gen 4. The first was a Pikachu-colored Pichu in Diamond and Pearl. This was a shiny Pichu with the original trainer named GameStop and was caught in an event-exclusive Cherish Ball. And this was actually obtained by pre-ordering cinema tickets for Pokemon Arceus and the Jewel of Life. There was a special feature where you could trade this Pichu over to Heart Gold and Soul Silver and bring it to the shrine in Ilex Forest. It would then trigger an in game event where a special spiky eared Pichu would come out and play with your Pichu before joining your party. This Pichu is supposedly the exact same one that appears in the movie, and when brought to Professor Elm, he tells you that it's extremely rare and that Celebi used time travel on it. Now, going back to Generation 1, does anyone remember how Lance's Dragonite knew the move Barrier despite not being able to learn it? Ever? Well, in Generation 5, players who competed in the Kanto Classic competition were awarded Lance's Dragonite, a special Dragonite with the same moveset as Lance's original Elite Four, complete with Lance as the original trainer. Also taking place during Gen 1 was a stamp campaign that let you get a hold of two of the rarest Pokemon in history, the Payday Pharaoh and Rapidash. These two Pokemon have never been re-released since that original campaign, causing them to go down as two of the most elusive Pokemon of all. All time. Moving up to Generation 7, Sun and Moon brought an early purchase event for a special Munchlax that knew the exclusive moves Holdback and Happy Hour. What's even cooler is that it was also holding a Snorlium Z, which was unattainable until the release of Ultra Sun and Moon. Now, not long after this, the series had one of its weirder event Pokemon, and a champ inspired by the three time Olympic gold medal winning Japanese wrestler Sayori Yoshida. This Machamp knew Double Edge, which is a move it can't learn naturally and was only obtainable for a month in select stores in Japan. Yoshida even appeared in a commercial riding her signature Machamp, which was pretty cool. Now let's jump back to Gen 3 for a second. What do you think was the most popular Pokemon at that time? Pikachu, Charizard, no. Believe it or not, it was actually Rayquaza. For the 15th anniversary of Red and Green, the Pokemon Company released a poll asking what everyone's favorite Pokemon was. And somehow, Rayquaza managed to win that poll. To celebrate, during February 2012, you could get a special Rayquaza with the move V-Create. Before this, the only Pokemon to ever learn V-Create was the mythical Pokemon Victini. With a ridiculous base power of 180, it's the third highest damaging move behind Explosion and Self-Destruct. Except in this case, it doesn't cause you to faint, so yeah, pretty big deal. Now similarly, when Game Freak reached 100 million trades on the global trade system, they decided to celebrate by releasing an exclusive fancy pattern pavilion. Then similarly, to celebrate the reopening of the official Pokemon Center website, from August 6th to the 12th of 2014, they released a unique Pokeball pattern pavilion. And so nowadays, these patterns have become extremely rare, never being re-released since the original events. But going back in time again, just before the release of Pokemon XD, Nintendo released a demo version in certain stores. Beating this demo rewarded you with a unique Metang that knew the move Refresh. You got this Pokemon in Gale of Darkness, but it's actually possible to transfer it up to the mainline games. Granted, not that easy. After beating Gale of Darkness, you can hook it up to your Game Boy Advance and transfer it to Emerald as long as you've beaten the Elite Four. From there, you have to trade it through Diamond and Pearl, then into Black and White, into the bank, and finally arrives in Home. So while technically possible, it is extremely difficult. And speaking of Pokemon Home, while technically possible to obtain, the special Pokeball Magurna is almost impossible to acquire as well. See, all you have to do is complete the entire national decks 
in home. Easy, right? Wrong, because even completing the regional Pokedex in every single game won't get you every Pokemon. Because if you want to get this elusive Magurna, you would have to get your hands on Victini, Genesect, Melota, Hoopa, Volcanion, Diancie, Marshadow, and Zarude, which none of are currently obtainable legitimately in any game. And each of these mythicals are just as rare as some of the Pokemon we've mentioned in their own rights, making Pokemon Magurna one of the rarest Pokemon of all time. Sword and Shield saw the introduction of Dynamax, and with that, certain Pokemon had the Gigantamax factor, which lets them turn into a brand new form. And some of these Pokemon were made available through certain events. First up, we had G-Max Bulbasaur and Squirtle, which were given as gifts to celebrate the Pokemon Home version 1.0 for update. Game Freak also added certain limited Gigantamax Pokemon through in-game Raid Den events. This being Milkry from the February 2020 Raid Den events, and even more interestingly, mistakenly added G-Max Hatter. This was a binary typo, but some people managed to snag it before the patch went out. And speaking of Sword and Shield, with the Galarian variants of the legendary bird trio being shiny locked, these shiny variants are pretty scarce to come by. However, a shiny Galarian, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres were given away as participants participation prizes. These were given out through the February, March, and April 2022 International Challenge events, respectively. As a side note, I love how these things have the same color scheme as their Kanto counterparts while retaining their new typings. But regardless, they still can't be obtained by any other means. Speaking of Kanto, let's talk Mewtwo. When the movie Genesect and The Legend Awaken was released, Game Freak decided to give out a special Pokemon Hills Mewtwo. This was distributed through Gen 5 games to people in Japan, Taiwan, Indonesia, and the Philippines who pre-ordered tickets. This Mewtwo knew the moves Hurricane and Heal Pulse, and had the original trainer P. Hills based on the film-exclusive location, Pokemon Hills. And while admittedly not great moves, their uniqueness makes this Mewtwo extremely rare, especially in the West where we never even got this event. So Zyrood is one of the rarest Pokemon of all time in its own right. As a mythical, it's currently unobtainable. But what if I told you there was an even rarer variant of Zyrood wearing a pink cape? That's right, I'm talking Dada Zyrood, which was given out along with a shiny Celebi for pre-ordering tickets to see the movie Pokemon Secret of the Jungle. In, as you might expect, Japan. The movie Secrets of the Jungle featured a tribe of Zarud, many with unique characteristics, but Dada Zarud was the most prominent of the tribe, making its way, pink scarfed and all, into the mainline games. And going back to a classic, we have Ash's Charizard. See, Ash's Charizard has used the move Seismic Toss all over the anime and movies, yet Charizard can't actually learn it. And it's so funny, because in 2017, Game Freak decided to release a stamp collecting event using the 7Spot app inside of 7-Eleven stores in Japan. And these Players could redeem two stamps for a 1 in 3 chance at getting Ash's elusive Seismic Toss Charizard. And best of all, it was complete with Ash as the original trainer. 